hi everyone so today I'm gonna be doing something a little different I'm not gonna be doing a cooking tutorial for you I'm gonna be giving you a crocheting tutorial yes I said crocheting <laughs> um, it's something I've been doing for years and years and years and I've always wanted to give a demonstration so today's a perfect time um, as you may know I have a little nephew coming in about two weeks um, his name's gonna be Colton he's um, due on August 15th I'm hoping right now that my sister just holds out that long because um, she's uh, she's scheduled for the 15th. Um, she's going to have a cesarean section, so we're kind of hoping that she doesn't go into labor beforehand because if she does, I'm not going to be ready. Um, so we'll see what happens. I have to go down there and help her take care of her other two kids. Um, I'm going to be helping her and her husband uh, take care of the other two kids while she's in the hospital recuperating and... Uh, you know gets ready to bring the baby home so all right this is what's gonna what, what I'm gonna be using today I'm gonna be using this multicolor blue um, yarn I know it kind of looks probably like a white blue and black but it trust me it's a dark blue to light blue and it's actually called um, shadow dusk there we go right there um, it's red heart and I got this I believe I got this at AC more now depending on what pattern you find um, whether it's on the internet or in a book a lot of patterns tell you to use an H hook for kids or a five millimeter for um for rather not kids but baby caps but I'm gonna go ahead and use an I hook only because I can almost guarantee that this kid's head is gonna be a little bit big um, as was the case with my other two nephews they both came out with pretty big heads uh, so I used an eye I believe I used an eye in their last in the last two caps I made for them when they were babies um, so I'm going to use it again and also um, it would help you to have a paper clip uh, and I'll explain why in a minute okay so now I've been doing this um, for years and years and years I've been doing this since I was seven years old I've been doing this for about 25 years um, and depending on where you learn how to crochet if you're a beginner um, I would suggest that you um, not only look at my video but also look at other people's videos on crocheting because everybody has a different technique of how they begin so this is my technique I take my string and I'm gonna turn it over like almost like it's a ribbon just like that and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loop the tail through and make almost like a Q so you've got the circle you got your little line here like a Q you got your tail right there um, but don't pull it so you make a knot because that's where your hook is going to go through um, now I've seen a couple of other videos where they've done these crazy things to make knots and I can't figure it out so I'm not going to even bother trying it right now so you're just going to put your hook in that loop and then you're going to pull and tighten it okay that's that's pretty much where you're going to be beginning now this this is what this is going to begin with four chains how do you make a chain it's simple you take your yarn this is how I also hold my my crochet needle different people do it different ways I am right-handed I am uh, my strong hand is my right hand so I always hold it um, very firmly and then the uh, my left hand I usually just I grab the tail with my um, thumb and my middle finger and then I wrap the yarn as my guide around my index finger so that's how I hold it so what you're gonna do to start your chain this calls for four chains all you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap around like that you're going to pull it through this loop right here okay if you can see you're going to pull it through this loop right here so you're just going to wrap around and you're going to pull right through okay so as you can see you got your first chain here and then this is going to be your your second chain all right usually they tell you to do it um loosely but until you get the hang of it if you're a beginner um, I can guarantee you're probably going to end up doing it tight and that's no problem. You'll figure it out in the long run. Um, your best bet is to always, if you feel like you're getting too tight, just slide it down to the middle right here where it's flat because it's a little bit wider and that'll just help you a little bit. All you have to do is slide it like that. Okay, so let's continue with our chain. We've got to do three more. So um, yarn over, pull it through. That's two. Yarn over, pull through. That's three. Yarn over pull through and that's four if you ever get confused always count from the bottom you're gonna count one here two three and then the one that's closest not the one on the hook but the one closest to the hook is your last one that's number four 
this doesn't count as a chain. So what this calls for is 12 double crochets in the fourth hook from the chain. Now, when you get to your bigger projects, when you're doing like um, a blanket or a scarf or anything like that, what you're going to do is you always have to, you're, you're going to have longer chains, I guarantee it, so you're always going to have to count backwards. And where you count from is from the closest one to the chain backwards. So obviously there's four, so we're obviously going to the bottom here, but say you're working on a blanket and you have like 150 chains and they tell you count fifth from the chain so you're going to count backwards from the chain you're going to count one two three four and say your fifth one's down here you're going to that's where you're going to start hooking through okay so 12 double crochets what you're going to do is you're going to wrap around your you're going to wrap your yarn around your hook you're going to go back all the way to the beginning chain you're going to put your hook in the chain okay just like that you're going to wrap around again and you're going to pull it through just this top loop right here. Okay, so you'll have three loops on your on your hook. One, two, and three. Now, a double crochet is a two-step process. You're going to wrap around, and you're going to pull it through just the top two loops. Just like that. You're going to leave this one on, and then this will be your brand new loop. Alright, then you're going to yarn over again, and then you're going to pull it through the last two. Just like that. That's your twelve. I'm sorry, that's your double crochet. Now we have to do 11 more to equal out 12. So you're going to yarn over, insert. I'm trying to keep it in camera mode. I apologize if I get out a little bit here. Now the tail will always be a problem in the beginning, but you just have to figure out a way to make it work for you. Pull it through. You got your three loops. Yarn over the first two. You got two left yarn over the last two. So that's two. Yarn over, insert hook, yarn over, pull through, three loops, yarn over, first two, yarn over, last two. Alright, so one, two, three. Now you got to do it nine more times. Now I'm going to stop here, I'm going to explain something. If you ever feel like you're losing control of this, all you got to do is just poke your pinky through and just look for your, your, your finger to come through or your fingernail. That's going to be your center. Now what you're going to do is if you get lost, what you're going to end up doing is just counting your... <clears throat> counting your uh, stitches backwards. So you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Don't count this because this is just your chain. But you do want to count all the way back to your ninth, uh, your first um, double crochet, which is number nine for me. Okay? So that means I just need to do three more. One. Two, three. Okay, so I did my 12. Now, what they're telling you to do is to slip stitch on the top of the beginning of the chain, which is basically, this is where your chain is, right here, and they want you to slip stitch, which is basically, you're, gonna, you're not going to yarn over, you're just going to insert at the top of where the chain began, you're going to yarn over, pull it through, and then pull it through this as well. That is your slip stitch, and that'll, that'll, that'll give you your 12. So again, if you need to count, start at the beginning, or start backwards if, if that makes it easier, but I'm going to start at the beginning. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay? Now, when you're working in rounds like that, what you're going to want to do is get your paper clip, which I told you to get earlier, and just open it up a little bit, not too much, so because you don't want it to fall out. 
and then you're just gonna what you're gonna do after you do your your I'm sorry what you're gonna do after you do your next first you, the first stitch of your next row is you're gonna insert it and I'll show you how so the next row we're gonna do three a chain of three one two three there's your chain and then you're gonna do two doubles crochets in each double crochet around so basically you're going to do what we just did but you're going to do it two times in each stitch so you're going to yarn over pull through yarn over the first two yarn over the second two okay yarn over insert yarn over pull through got your three there yarn over first two yarn over second two now how do you not get lost with your counts? Easy. You take your paper clip, open it up a little bit, and insert it where the um, the chain stitches. Okay, just like that. It's gonna be like a little anchor, like a little keychain maybe. And then just for easier, cl just close it up a little bit. It's easy to open and close, especially. You definitely want to use paper clips. They do sell. Um, stitch markers at at Walmart or AC Moore or Michaels or any craft store near you use those those are just easy but these are cheaper and a lot easier to deal with all right so you're going to do two double crochets in each stitch going all the way around I'll do the first couple with you so yarn over insert hook yarn over pull through got you three loops yarn over first two yarn over last two Again, in the same stitch that you just did, yarn over, insert hook, yarn over, pull through, three loops, yarn over first two, yarn over second two. Okay? Do it one more time. Yarn over, insert hook, excuse me, yarn over, pull through, three loops, yarn over first two, yarn over second two same stitch yarn over insert hook yarn over pull through yarn over first two yarn over second two okay so I'm going to continue all the way around now if you can't see what I'm doing um, because of the dark colors I do apologize what I was just what I would suggest um, especially for beginners is that you start um, with a light color um, a solid color as well a white a yellow a lime green a light blue a pink anything of that sort a cream um, and just get some practice in before you try doing anything like this because it takes a long time to remember all the stitches and all of the um, different abbreviations which I'll go through in a later video you see how it's coming out and especially if you're working with a multicolor yarn like this, um, it can get uh, a little confusing. So I would, I would strongly, until you learn how you're counting and how you're, um, until you learn how you're counting and how you're reading your abbreviations and how you're holding everything with your hands, I would strongly suggest do a uh, light solid color first until you get the hang of it. Now, just to be sure that I have 24 going on here, I'm going to start, I'm going to just pull my hook out for a minute. I'm going to count backwards. I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. All right, so I know I need to do one more. Uh, actually I should do one I have to do one more set so let's get in here it's always good to count to make sure you're not missing anything um, make sure you didn't do one too many or two too many or you're one short or two short um, you just want to make sure you have all the right ones so now that we're at the end of our 24 you take the paper clip off because you have to slip stitch again So again, what you're going to do is you're going to take your hook, you're going to insert it at the top of the slip stitch, and that you have to kind of maneuver in. Yarn over, pull through the slip stitch, um, pull through the chain rather, but also pull through here. Don't stop, just keep on going, and then there you go. That's uh, 
your 24 there. This is your 24 out here. Now, <clears throat> when I say count your stitches, I always suggest do it one by one. Don't do multiples because that's where you'll get lost. Always do one, two, three, four. Don't go twos by twos or threes by threes or however your um, pattern is calling for. Okay, so like I said, we just did two double crochets in each stitch for your second row. So if you ever get lost and you need to go back and count, do it. Do count the stitches one by one. Don't do them two by two because then you'll really get lost. Okay. So for round three, I'm going to do a chain of three, one, two, three. And for this, we have to do two double crochets in one stitch, and in the next stitch, we have to do a one double crochet all the way around. So we should end up with 36. So yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over the first two, yarn over to the second two. Again yarn over, insert in the same stitch, yarn over and pull through, yarn over the first two and then yarn over the second two. This is where you want to put in your paper clip or your stitch marker. Okay, just like that. And like I said, the next one is just going to be one double crochet, so it's going to be a yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over the first two and then yarn over the second two. Okay, so you got one, two, and three. And do two double crochets. And then one double crochet. Two double crochets. and one double crochet and you're going to keep going like that all the way around now once you get the hang of this and or if you're a beginner and then but if you're also an expert at this and you just need um, a quick update on how to do this this is probably the easiest baby um, gift that you can make by yourself and it's also a lot cheaper than going to the store um, and buying it. Plus, I always find that handmade gifts, whether it's crocheting or needlepoint or knitting or painting or anything like that, um, any woodwork, anything that you make by hand, I find is always more personal and more appreciated by the people you're giving it to. Um, in the past couple of months, I've made... Um, well, I should include my sisters now because that's done. In the past few months, I've done four baby blankets. And everybody just loves the fact that they're getting a gift that's more personal and not just store-bought. So if you're crafty, no matter what craft you're in, whether it's crocheting or painting or woodwork or um, re even if you're a rebuilder, you know, if you take something and you rebuild, <clears throat> excuse me my god if you take something and rebuild it um oh, you see I made a mistake there I did two here and two here so all you got to do is pull out one from that stitch um if you rebuild something from scratch or if you just fix something up and you know give it back to them um you know all spruced up and nice and ready to go I always find that's more personal and just it's a lot more appreciated Um, I'm doing a set for my sister for the new baby. I'm doing a hat like this, um, a baby blanket I've already finished, and I'll be showing you guys later on down the road, a pair of booties, and a, um, a teddy bear. Uh, the Everything except for the teddy bear I have done for my nephews. I've done, I've done the complete set, the blanket, the hat, and the booties. Um, when they were each born four, four and five years ago, um, but uh, within the last year or two, I also made some teddy bears for them. I think it was last August, actually. Um, I made so I made actually I made one teddy bear and one teddy dog. I made a little doggy um, crocheted for them. I made a, a patriotic one. I did the red, white, and blue um, yarn, and my sister actually 
didn't want the dog <laughs> to get a hold of it and ruin it so she actually put it up um, on their I guess their booked bookcase or changing table case or I don't know whatever piece of furniture they have in there okay so I'm at the I'm at my last round so I'm just gonna slip stitch through and close that up so that's what you got right now when you're going from rounds one to three so you if you ever lose track of what round you're on for whatever reason one two three your best bet is just to look for the space in between the stitches right here okay um, if you want to take your hook out just make sure you have an extra big loop you can put your finger in and just search for the spaces in between so you put one you put two and then you put three and you know and then if you get down to the center and it looks it starts to look like a flower like that then you know you got three that you know that's your your basic your eye I call that the eye I don't know if that's a correct term or not but that's how I do it okay so what's gonna happen now is you need to do um uh, let's see four five eight, six more rows so this is what I do because all four through um, rows four through ten are all the same what I do is I get a get my pad out here is I just grab my pad and a pen and then I mark how many more rows or how many more rounds I have to go down so it's gonna be rounds four five six seven eight nine and ten so when you have them all marked down, once you get them done, all you can do is X them out. And once you get to the end, then you know you're done. Okay? So rows 4 through 10 are all the same. All you're going to do is you're going to double stitch all the way around. And then you're going to slip stitch at the top of your chain. So I'll start the first round with you. You're going to do a chain 3. And you're going to yarn over for your first double crochet insert yarn over pull through your three loops yarn over your first two loops yarn over and your last two loops okay and you're going to just do that all the way around yarn over insert yarn over pull through yarn over the first two yarn over the second two all the way around that's all you have to do i know i'm not i'm like in and out of the camera range but i'm still getting used to this whole thing here just in case <laughs> I think I'm out as far as I can go oh, no, I got out a little bit further how about that okay so you have a little bit of an idea now so I'm just gonna continue all the way through let me put my paper clip back in my little hook my so I know where I am now, if you're a beginner, what I would suggest you start off on is um, make maybe make it a scarf for either you, a child, a loved one, whomever. Um, basically, just make a a, a chain um, length of, of about mm, maybe about 25 to 50, depending on what size hook you use. And then just go back and forth, either doing a single crochet or double crochet. Uh, stitch and do it till as long as you need it so that it wraps around your neck at least once <clears throat> this is so much fun when I started crocheting um, like I said I started when I was seven my mom was making all these blankets and all these you know different scarves and everything my mom was my mom's very talented she um used to she I she's been crocheting for as long as I can remember but she also um painted uh pottery you know she'd go to the local pottery shops pick something up that was unfinished she'd paint it out and have it um uh what's the term fired up in a kennel fire I guess it's called I'm not really sure I may be wrong until it had a beautiful um seal on it and she just did some beautiful work um, she did um, when I was I guess when I was a baby she did some uh, little men some elves or some uh, dwarves they look like the you know two of the little dwarves in the Snow White and the Seven Dwarves characters 
and she did them for my great grandparents and we still have them my, I just took them back down to North Carolina um, uh, last month because my grandmother had them in her house for so long that you know my, once my mom got her own house my grandmother felt that you know she would want them back so I took them back and mom was pleasantly surprised to see them she thought maybe my grandmother would want to keep them but grandma with all her house uh, re remodeling is she just doesn't have any place for them okay so I'm on my last stitch so I'm gonna take out my paper clip I'm gonna slip stitch through the first the top of the three chain pull through all the way through okay and as you, you can probably see it's starting to curve a little bit so that you know that you know you're getting you're starting to get a hat formation so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna keep going with my uh, crocheting um, and just make sure you remember that when you're done with a certain row that you take your pad and your pad and pen and you just mark off what row you finished okay now again if you forget just take your hook out or take a pen or pencil and just go through in between each of the stitches going downwards until you reach the eye or the center where your little tail is your tails right here sorry <laughs> so here's your eye okay so just keep going until you reach your your tenth place and once you're done then you'll be able to finish it off. Okay guys, so while this um, runs through uh, time lapse for the next couple of minutes, I'm just going to take a couple minutes to uh, share with you um, the possibilities of this project. First of all, no, I really cannot crochet that quick. If I was able to do that, trust me, I'd be having my own store right now. I'd be working like a robot and I don't have robotic arms. So, that being said, <laughs> um, Basically, this beanie hat, um, like I said, we're doing this one for a newborn, uh, maybe up to about three months. Uh, you could do this beanie hat and just add on to it. Um, you can go anywhere from a preemie size to an adult size. And when I say adult, I'm talking the biggest head you can possibly imagine in the world. Um, all you basically have to do is you have to keep adding on rows. Um, it'll probably you probably have to make it a little bit well I shouldn't say a little bit wider but you'll probably have to make it wider depending on the circumference of um, who's ever had you're making it for uh, like I said uh, before it this project is super simple it's a good maybe all you need is a good 20 30 minutes to pop one of these out and basically it's per, it's, a, it's a perfect gift for anybody it's perfect for Christmas or birthdays or like this case a new baby or uh, just because uh, if you want to add a little pom-pom on the top of the hat you can do that that would be super cute uh, there's even um, uh, directions on the internet or even in books that are sold in the craft stores that you can go and add you know bunny ears or bear ears or puppy dog ears or anything of that sort just something to make it more cute or you can add a face onto it all you have to do is crochet out eyes a nose and maybe um sew in a mouth or something and you can be, these are, this is a project that you can add just about anything to you can um you know spice it up for uh the kids to wear to school uh, with double horns and you know give them a reason to make their teachers crazy uh, you can add bunny ears and make kids wear on a cold Easter day you can add you can make this red and just add a white trim and maybe a white pom pom on top for Christmas uh, the possibilities are endless so if you're a beginner uh, what you need to do, what you really should do after following some videos, whether it's mine or somebody else's on YouTube, go to AC Moore, go to Michael's, go to Walmart, or to any other craft store in your area, wherever you live. Um, pick up a skein of yarn, pick up um, either a pack or a single thing of a crochet needle, and just start getting to work because once you get the hang of this, the sooner you can start, the, 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 the quicker you'll get the hang of it, and the quicker you can get as many hats out as you can possibly think of. 
this would also be a good gift to give for coworkers. Say you work in an office where you're just full of cubicles and all of you are, all of your coworkers and yourself, you're all close and you're planning a big Christmas party or a, a holiday party. And this would be the perfect gift to give out to everybody. It's like I said, it's quick, it's cheap, it's simple, and it's just worth your time. If you're bored at home, if you're sick, or if you have a rainy day or a snowy day, or you just don't feel like doing anything else, this is the thing for you. Okay? So guys, I'm going to let you continue watching the video. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Okay, so I'm on my last row here, and I'm just about to close it off. So I'm going to do my last slip stitch right here, just like that. Now, this is how it turns out. I don't know how well you can see that, but this is the top right here, and this is the bottom. Now, if you feel that maybe it's a little too small, by all means, add um, an extra row or two, which I think I may end up doing. But as you can see, it turned out pretty well. I'm just going to take this. I'm going to make this loop bigger. But it turned out pretty well. Um, I'm happy with the way it came out. It actually looks really cute. It looks like it's got a little swirl thing going on with it. But um, you got to remember, it, some parents like to leave it like this. And some like to actually flip up the the bottom rim like that, which actually that looks a lot cuter. So, um, and it does look really small, but you got to remember a newborn baby. And um, I don't know how many of you are around newborn babies a lot if you're a nurse or if you've got a lot of pregnant people, a lot of pre pregnant friends in your household or whatever. But you got to remember that this is for a newborn baby. Um, I think I'm going to add one more row on this, but I have finished my 10 rows. So let me add one more row, like I said, I think I am going to do. And when I get back, I'll show you how to finish it off, and we'll get the final result in. Okay, so I finished my last row. I actually made a row number 11. And it is, a, you could tell it's a little bit longer, which I don't mind, because I can guarantee my sister's probably going to flip it up to make it um, have a little brim. So, what I usually do, and I don't know if this is, again, the politically correct uh, way in crocheting to tie something off but what I do is I tie a long tail I'm oh, sorry I don't tie it I cut off a long piece of tail just like that and what I do is I act like I'm gonna do another stitch so what I do is I actually I'm gonna bring you in a little bit here so you can see what I'm doing okay what I actually do is I yarn over and I pull it all the way through um, the loop. Make sure the tail comes all the way through, and I give it a I give the tail a little yank so it tightens up. And then what I do is I actually knot it as close to this last stitch as possible. Basically, I want to make a knot right on top of the stitch. So what I do is after I make the the loop and the pull through, I just hold my hand my fingers in place like that so it's you know down as far as it can go and then I just pull the tail out just like that and then sometimes it helps to do a second one so that's what I'm gonna do right now I'm just gonna do a quick second one Okay, now what you want to do is this is the ha this is the hat um, uh, right side out. Okay, it's not inside out. There's nothing showing on the inside. So what I want to do is I actually want to turn it inside out so that the little tail here is showing. And what you want to do is you want to go into your case and you actually want to find a crocheting needle that's maybe one or two sizes smaller than what you just worked with so I just worked with the eye so I'm gonna go in I'm gonna get my G hook what you want to do sorry I'm talking to my it's it's 1 45 in the morning guys okay this is how late I'm working on this and I'm talking to my sister who's nine months pregnant and she's on the computer so go figure 
anyway, what you want to do is you want to weave in the um, weave in the ends that you have, like your beginning tail and then your end tail. Now, if you ever come to a point, and I'll show this in a later video, where you have to tie off either a new skein of yarn, or if you're doing more than one color in here, and you have to attach different pieces of yarn, I'll show you how to do that later. But what you want to do is you want to weave these in. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your um, your smaller needle. <coughs> excuse me. You're going to take your smaller needle. And you want to try to do, if you're working in a multicolor like I did, what you want to do is you want to try to weave it in around the same color. So being this is light blue, I'm going to work with these light blue stitches right here. So all you're going to do is you're going to just wiggle your, your crochet needle in the stitches just like that. All right, see, I got all five of the stitches. You're going to wrap the little tail around and just pull them through all the stitches. Is it weird? Yes, of course it's weird, but it's worth it. So what I do is, after I pull it through like that, I just go through at least the middle two if I can. And I pull it through going the other way. So it's like a, like a Z or a zigzag. And it just kind of holds it in a little bit just like that it won't do much it won't make the outside look much different but it's fine and then what you want to do is you want to try to cut it as close to the end as you can um, near the stitches without cutting actually cutting the stitches so you can see a little bit right here I'll show you this is the the tail right here the end of the tail right here and this is what I just cut off so that's that all right now I'm gonna fold it out I'm gonna fold it back to the way it should be so you can see the top this is um the top right here wait where are you <laughs> i'm sorry guys i'm still trying to learn how to work with this camera here so this is what the top looks like you can see you don't see any tail actually i'll show you this part right here this little section right here that's the tail but it's inside the hat now so you really can't see it and nobody will know any different okay now with the long tail So with the long tail, which you, when, the reason why I told you to do a long tail is you will actually want to weave it through um, a few different sections here. So we're going to actually go um, like we were doing another round. So what you want to do is you want to take your small crocheting hook. And actually what you're going to want to do is fold the brim up a little bit because you actually want to do this from the inside so you don't see it on the outside as much. And just try to find some some way to get in between all the stitches here so I'm just gonna go let's see how many do I have here I got a lot of work here one two three four five six seven and this is gonna be the back anyway so nobody uh, again will really notice and if my sister flips it up like I know she probably will then you definitely won't see it so just try to get in between like the middle of the stitches like that until you get to the end and then you're going to wrap the tail around the hook and then very carefully because you don't want to get it stuck and you may even want to wiggle like I'm wiggling this back and forth as you're pulling them through try not to get caught on any of the stitches as you're pulling the tail through if you do just stop find a way to unhook your your tail pull this out and then pull your tail back that way all right but you see I got my little loop here so I'm just gonna pull it the rest of the way with my finger fingers <laughs> see you can you can tell there's a tail there but you can't really tell where it is um, again because as I suspect my si suspect my sister's gonna be just rolling up the brim of the hat and that's all so if you want to do a couple more by all means go ahead I'm just I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple more See, just like that, I kind of did a little boo-boo. So I'm just going to pull out, just like that. And I'm going to find my spot again. And see if I can get it to work again this time. There 
There we go. Okay. And again, all you have to do is just clip as close to the stitch as you can without clipping the stitch. Cut it off. And you are done. And here's our finished product. There's the top. And there you go. It's, like I said, it's a little bit long, but knowing my sister, she's going to want to fold it up to give it a little brim. So this is probably what it'll look like on him. <laughs> Looks so cute. It's going to be so much fun seeing him in this. See? That's it. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned um, at least something new. Uh, and if you're if you're a beginner, welcome to crochet. And if you're um, a novice or an expert and you just need a little brush up, I hope this helped. Um, stay tuned for some more uh, crocheting projects that are going to be coming up. Uh, I look forward to doing this again with you guys. So enjoy, have fun, and happy crocheting. Take care, guys. Later. Bye. <laughs>